Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike, and today, today we got a new brand to check out on the channel, Bosch. I'm freaking excited because this table saw is really nice. Good quality, everything, fit and finish is excellent. However, this table saw has a serious problem. This fence, this fence will lock down crooked in either direction to the tune of about 40 thousands. And I spoke with Bosch on the phone yesterday and they told me possibly how to fix it. I haven't done it yet. We're gonna do it together. So today I'm gonna show you the unboxing. We're gonna do the assembly of the stand. We'll put it together and then we're going to address this fence and see if it's any good or if it has to go back to Bosch. I'm also going to tell you about my experiences calling them yesterday and what they told me. So let's get this thing out of the box and put it together and then we'll check out the fence. In a couple weeks, you're going to get a full blown normal review video just like we always do with this. Uh, so let's get to it. Robert Bosch Tool Corporation, Mount Prospect, Illinois, 60056. I bought this table saw from the Menards in Mount Prospect. But Mike, you say, why would you go all the way to Mount Prospect, Illinois, when you live in Chicago? Well, the one in Morton Grove, which is not too far from here, showed one in stock. And when I showed up, it was the display. Good thinking, Menards. <laughs> I swear, I want to like Menards. I do. I want to like them. What is that thing? Rarely do I open a box and there's something there that I have no idea what it is. I'll bet we're going to find out though. Plastic? But, oh look, it's actually metal. It's got a scale that I can read. Look at that. Already, I'm seeing things I like. Nice red metal. Beautiful. This is one of the very few saws on the market without a rack and pinion fence. That is a lot of money. I'm very interested to see how square does this lock down? Is it just as good as a rack and pinion fence without being rack and pinion? We're gonna find out for sure. There are a few things I like more than getting a new table saw. Plastic housing. Wow, plastic gears. Plastic gears. All right, let's get out of the box. The stand is nicely packed. Even these little pieces have some heft to them. Nice powder coat. Seriously industrial looking wheels, tires on this thing. Got a little bit of squish to them, but they're solid. Looks nice, man. We'll check the gauge on all this tubing, but let's get it out of here and see how easy it is to put together. It's 14 gauge, 14 right there. The coating gets a little thick in places, but it is 14 gauge as best I can tell. There you go. Not too shabby, man. Seriously not shabby. This is thick stuff. This feels well made, like good quality. Assembly doesn't look too difficult. There's a few major components. These two bars. Go together in opposite directions from each other. It's a snug fit. Oh. <laughs> this is where I punch myself in the face. The four Phillips head with the 13 millimeter nut connect these two tubes together. Freaking Phillips head. His feet are weird. On this side, flexible round rubber pad, exactly how what you would expect. On this side, square metal with this weird little roller on the side. Figure that out. Next up, axle brackets. Take your wheel, drop it on your axle. Big washer, big axle nut. The manual says 24 millimeters, but 15 16 works just fine. 
Of the bolts that come with spacers, you have three different kinds. You've got a skinny spacer that's similar, a long bolt and a short bolt. And you've got a short bolt with a thick spacer. Next up, we got this little bracket right here. We're gonna mount to this hole. We're gonna use the bolt with the thick spacer. And from the back side, spacer, bracket, washer, and 13 mil nut. The other side is just gonna be a mirror image of this one. We're gonna take the right side, this hole right here, and this hole right here. Bolt with three washers. You're gonna go washer, washer in the middle, washer on the other side. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Next up, we got these bolts without the nut and the little star washer, threaded holes on the end, and these holes right here. But it's gonna go underneath the frame. So this is where we're at so far. Everything's attached except for these. And we got one tube left. This tube right here. And it appears this tube is going to attach here and here. And then these are going to come up and attach here with spacers. There's four bolts left. The longer ones are going to go here. The shorter ones are going to go through here. So we'll go bolt and washer, spacer. Through the tube there, washer and nut. It's always fun to put the spacer in at the end, the last step, but that's not too bad. And then this gets pretty obvious here at the end. Put our spacer in. We'll do the other side. I'll tighten all this stuff down and let's see how we did. This barely fits on the table, but you get the idea. There you go. One gravity rise stand. All right, so simple enough. Turn the lever, push down. It latches to undo the latches. Just raise it back up. So we got four bolts in their own bag. Long skinny ones, hole here, hole right there. We'll just line them all up. Washer on top, washer on the bottom. Last order of business, we pulled the styrofoam out and we're gonna install this flexible screen on the bottom. There's one Phillips head screw and a bunch of holes that we're going to slot in. There's a whole bunch of these, so you're going to have to work it around a little bit to get them all lined up. Once you have it all slotted in there, we'll just tighten the screw. There you go. So let's get to the top, where more than likely, if there's going to be a downside to this table saw and a sticking point, it's going to lie with this fence. This is not a rack and pinion fence. The front and the back are not designed to move together all the time and be fixed. This fence is heavy. It locks down secure as hell with this lever. It is absolutely butter smooth. As smooth as a fence could possibly be, it feels like a million bucks sliding it back and forth. But this locking system where it grabs from the front and the back and squeezes is not always the best. I suspect Bosch probably did it better than most, but let's figure it out. It has this much wiggle room. The rear is not moving, not really, and the front is moving back and forth. So if I lock it, it doesn't straighten itself first and then lock. This concerns me. Am I always gonna be off this much when I push it and then lock it and then try and cut? When I flip the lever down, in this case up, but when I flip it down to lock the fence, two things happen. This plate here with this little ridge pushes in against the rail in the front, like that. And this hook on the back side. I don't know if you can see it winking over there, but this side goes that way, this side goes that way and it locks itself down. It locks solid and I'm really happy with it. Fit and finish seems to be really nice. It's got these little rails, if you will, that line up with these rails here. The back rail has a little V to match this shape. And this is actually metal, this part right here. 
So metal locking into metal, both front, this is metal too, and back. To put it back, you just hook the back side and then drop the front down and then it's locked. It's not going anywhere. It has a little finger loop, a little hole here. You can get your finger in there to give you a little more leverage if you needed to release it. Or you could just grab it and lift it up. Let's run a couple experiments here. I'm gonna push my fence over. I'm gonna push it from the reasonable position of right around here. We'll push it over to 10 inches and just lock it down. Locked, not going anywhere. We'll put our saw gauge on here, put it to zero. I know it's all the way over here, but it says 70. 30 thousandths off across this fence right now. Right back to zero. Make a mental note which way that turned. It went around this way to 70. Now I'm gonna push the fence over from the other side. Same spot, we'll push it over to 10 inches and just lock it down. All right, saw gauge on, set to zero, pull it over. We are off by 37 thousandths. And if you note, we went the other direction this time because the swing of this, pushing it from either side the swing back and forth is about 80 thousandths. Back to zero. On the back of the fence, there is this adjusting knob. No tools needed, it's a knurled knob. As far as I can tell, it pulls this in a little tighter. So if you've been using this for 10 years and it's worn out and it just is loose in the rails, you can turn this to pull this in a little bit tighter to lock it down tighter so when you hit it it's more secure it doesn't move that's what i think this is for i don't see a logical reason why pulling this little pawl in the back a little closer to the fence is going to cause this to lock down any straighter but let's start with half a turn all right so let's pull the fence over we went half a turn about 10 inches it already feels tighter to lock down with that adjustment. We'll set this to zero. And we're off about 10, 20, eh, about 25, almost exactly 25. If we go to the end, you're off camera and it's like 32. So no improvement. One and a quarter turns. Getting real tight to lock down, set to zero. Ah, it's terrible. If I bring it in camera, you can see it's like 28 thousandths. So it's literally just hit or miss. The best I've done is eight thousandths from one end to the other. The worst is 40. All right, so yesterday I called Bosch customer service. I called the main line that you'll find on the website for power tools. I spoke with a woman, she's very nice. I explained what was going on. She didn't really seem interested in that. She said, is the saw more than 30 days old? I said, no, it's two weeks old. I bought it two weeks ago. She said, just return it. Return it, get your money back or exchange it for a new one. I said, well, that's not really what I'm trying to do. I just wanna figure out what's going on. She said, we don't service tools that are less than 30 days old. She said, just return it. So not the answer I was after, but I guess that's a good policy. It's a table saw. I don't want to freaking put it back to, in the box to return it. If it was a drill, you throw it in the box, you run back to Menards, you get a new one. Fine. That's a good policy. But for this, it's a pain in the butt and I don't want to do it. So I sent the email. I got a confirmation email back. It says three to four days for response, business days, which is not fast enough for me because I'm trying to make a video for you guys. That automated email had another phone number that said Pro Advantage, I think. So I called that phone number. I talked to a guy who I don't think he knew what I was talking about and I was having trouble hearing him, but he transferred me to another guy who was the technical guy. 
I explained this to him. I explained it to him twice because I don't think I was explaining it well. Plus, we're on the phone. So I said, I tightened this knob a bunch of times, not doing anything. And he said, don't tighten the knob, loosen it. Loosen this knob for this back paw for the minimum amount of tension it takes to securely lock it down. Now, what he said makes sense because what's happening is this back paw is locking the fence before this self-aligning plate in the front here can align the fence. So let's loosen this knob and we'll see if this will now self-align before this tightens down. Makes total sense. I'm gonna loosen this. It's about two turns tighter than it should be. I'm not gonna worry so much about how much I loosen it. And there you go, it's pretty loose. So now I'm getting actual movement out of the back even though it's tight. You can actually tighten this with the fence locked down. You can still move the knob. Tighten it little by little. That is about the minimum. Now it's at the minimum to securely lock the back of the fence so it won't move. Can it self-align? Put it about 10 inches, lock it down, put it to zero. Pha, five thousandths. I can actually move the back if I push it hard enough. We might tighten it up just a hair to get that slap out, but now it works beautifully. We push our fence over, lock it down just like we have been. We'll set this to zero. There's zero. And we're off by like three thousandths. Look at that. And this is repeatable. Do it again. Zero. Five thousandths. A little less than five thousandths now. So where do we end up in this video? Gravity rise stand. Excellent. I like it a lot. It's compact. It has a nice finish. It went together without a hitch. It latches front and back. It's, it's, dude, it's excellent. I really like the stand on this saw. This fence, the fence issue bugs me and it's a, it was such a simple fix, right? No big deal. Before YouTube, let's say five years ago, I would have fiddled with this until I figured it out for myself. It would have probably taken me five or 10 minutes. So what about the 18 year old or the new woodworker who buys a table saw not really understanding how all the components work? With zero experience, I will tell you at 20 years old, I would have never checked this. I would have taken out of the box, assumed I paid a lot of money for it and it's a good quality product from a good manufacturer and just started using it. And I would have been locking my fence down a millimeter off in either direction totally crooked and using it that way for years, I'm sure. So you could say, hey, Mike, you should know better and just be able to figure these things out. And you're totally right. But I call customer service so I can tell you guys how good is the customer service. And before I started doing YouTube, I never called customer service phone number once ever. I do that so we can figure out how is the customer service. I would give them I would say a B. I called, I didn't get the answer I needed. I sent an email three to four business days to return a response, which is reasonable, I guess, but I found another phone number and got to another person who then transferred me to somebody who could answer my question when I pushed. I had to dig a little to get a right answer, but we got an answer. So. It just goes to show you, if you have a question and you're not getting the answer you want, you got to push customer service a little bit sometimes to get to the person that can give you the right answer. Overall, this is a nice table saw. I can't wait to get some wood on this thing and check it out. We're going to do that in a couple weeks. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe. It really helps out the channel and you don't miss out on all the table saw videos we're going to do in the future. 
Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.